Here's my center of opera. Anybody here? Hi, the door was open. What is it? Something that'll make you feel better. Drink it. Just a couple sips. Uh, no thank you. Don't make her drink any of your weirdo concoctions. Then I really will have to take her to the emergency room. You just go back to your phone call and leave us be. Don't pay him any mind. Where am I? You're at Henry Bollet's house, dear. In the library. He and I carried you in here after I found you unconscious in the foyer. Why is it so dark in here? The electricity went out. Lightning must have struck a transformer somewhere. What happened? Can you remember? Well, the front door was open, so I walked in, and then I saw this... Well, I saw a skeleton. And then he saw me. And then the light started flickering, and he threw something at me that exploded. The smoke must have made me pass out. You saw a skeleton? I'm sure it was just someone, you know, wearing a costume or something. I'm Nancy Drew, by the way. I came to see Henry. So we surmised. I'm Renee Amand. I'm Bruno Bollet's housekeeper. That is, I was. This skeleton that attacked you? Perhaps we should call the police. No. No emergency room. No police. Things are complicated enough as it is. Henry's feeling a mite overwhelmed. Well, you are looking much better, so I'm going to get back to my plant parting. You need anything? I'll be outside in the garden. I should call them and keep them on hold for five hours and see how they like it. Yes, hi, it's me. Hey, Nance, I just got back from shopping, which I am happy to report is fantastic here. So, what's going on with you? A lot. A lot is in a whole bunch of fun stuff? Let me start by telling you what happened when I arrived at Henry's house. I walked up to the front door and discovered it was open, so I walked in. You were knocked out by a skeleton wearing a red ascot? Someone dressed as a skeleton wearing a red ascot. You think it was a burglar? I'm not sure. 
The room I caught him or her sneaking around in doesn't really contain anything valuable. If I just knew what they were after, I might be able to figure out who Skeleton Man is. I know that tone of voice. You're not leaving there until you've done just that, are you? Oh, I also found some kind of receipt in the fireplace that may or may not be a clue. What's it a receipt for? That's what I need to find out. See, it's half burned up. All I can read is the receipt number and the name of the place it's from. Zeke's. Zeke's? You've got to be kidding me. Why? What do you mean? I mean, I'm sitting here on our balcony in the French Quarter looking down at a place across the street called Zeke's. That's great. So go over there and ask whoever's behind the counter what receipt number 21-3872 is for. No way. Beth. I'm not good at that sneaking around stuff, Nancy. I get nervous, my tongue gets all knotted up, my palms sweat to say nothing of my armpits. Beth, receipt number 21-3872. Just go in and ask what it's for. No big deal. Maybe not for you. Beth, you can do it. Mm, this is not going to end well. I just know it. Okay, I'll call you as soon as it's over. I'll be waiting. Hey, doing a little end-of-the-day shopping, huh? See something you like? I like everything. That's what I want to hear. I'm Lamont. This is my place. So if you got any questions, I'm the guy to ask. Actually, I do have a question. Um... This friend of mine found the number of a receipt that came from this shop, and she asked me to ask you what the receipt is for. But if you're really busy, or you'd rather not, or it's against the rules... No problem. What's the number? Uh, 21-3872. 21-3872. Here we go. That ticket was for a large box of assorted unknown items I bought from Henry Beaulieu. And, uh, that's all I can tell you. Is something wrong? Look, I just don't want to make trouble for anyone, okay? Where's the box now? It's still in the back room. I haven't had a chance to really go through it yet. Hey, is there something else I can help you with? Beads, hula dolls, old books. Got great deals on all of them. Guess I'll check this place out some more. You got a question, just holler. This might come in handy. Um, I can't quite reach that bottle up there. Could you get it for me? Sure. Something. What do you need? No spray. Back room. No spray. Back room. Got it. Cute dog. This is weird. I better call Nancy and read this to her word for word. Wow, 
Wow, Bess, that is weird. No, I'll tell you what's weird. The box the letter is in is padded, and it has this round indentation in it that's the exact size of a human skull. It's like it used to contain a skull, but now it doesn't. Did you find anything else? Yeah, inside the box that this box is in, there's a couple of photographs. One's of a boy and a dog, and the other is of an iguana dressed up like a pirate. What? And there's a costume in the box of a skeleton man. Really? And did I mention that Lamont was very reluctant to talk about buying this box of stuff from Henry? Said he didn't want to get anyone in trouble, whatever that means. Sounds like he or Henry, or possibly both, are up to something they shouldn't be. Good job, Bess. I'm going to poke around here and see if I can find out anything about a skull called the Whisperer. You better go take care of Lamont. Would you believe it? The guy is still sneezing. He must keep nose spray around because something's wrong with his sinuses. Oh, he's going to hate me. To figure out if there's anything camouflaged in that design, I'm going to need some paper. Nancy, welcome to my little lantern-lit corner of the world. It's a little wet out here. I don't mind. No one should mind the rain. Without it, the end of the world would come much too soon. Did you and Henry have a nice chat? I haven't really talked to him yet. Henry's a very morose, very negative young man. Very cunning, too. In fact, I'm fairly certain that he's been selling off Dr. Bolet's belongings on the sly. Won't all of Dr. Bolet's belongings go to Henry anyway? Absolutely not. According to Dr. Bolet's will, Henry is to get 30% of the estate. Dr. Bolet's physician, Gilbert Buford, gets 30%. Our Lady of Route 57 School of Dentistry and Cosmetology gets 30%, and I am to receive 10%. Do you by any chance have some plain paper that I could use? I most certainly do, but it's up in my room, and I'm afraid I cannot retrieve it for you until I'm finished here. You get the sudden urge to draw a picture? Something like that. I know, I'll help you. That way you'll get done faster. Gracious, you are the picture of impatience, aren't you? Well, I appreciate the offer. But here, why don't you just take this instead? It's an extra key to my room. The paper's in a drawer in my nightstand. Just go on up and help yourself. But make sure you lock the door when you leave, you hear? You I trust. But Henry? Him I do not. I really appreciate this. And long as you're going up there, my appetite could use a little placating. So I would be much obliged if you would bring me a candy bar from my nightstand. And take one for yourself while you're at it. One more thing. I, too, have seen the skeleton man. After Dr. Bolet passed that night, I saw him in the hallway. He was there, then he was gone. So you best be careful, Nancy Drew, because if it was Mr. Death, and I truly think it was, he's come back. One for Renee. Was Uncle Bruno's pet iguana, Iggy. 
He's always in here stealing paper. He must be using it to build a nest or something. Look, I had all those books arranged so they fit perfectly in that box. Put them back in, okay? I don't have time. I just want to look through this one book. Go right ahead. After you put all those other books back. the painting that goes in that empty frame. anything about that? Well, how was I supposed to know? I mean, what am I, telepathic? Oh, God. Look, I'll, I'll see what I can do, okay? What do you mean, something else? You gotta be kidding me, Summer. I don't have that kind of money. No, no, I meant, I, I don't have it now. But I will, soon, okay? Bye. Oh, man. Here's my center of op-
This must be where I'm supposed to put all the glass eyes I've found. Let's see how we're doing. like the right name. Gotcha. May 31st? That's today. Librarian's Tale. Hmm. Something Bruno Bollet wrote in that Tired Eyes book mentioned the librarian's eye. Here we go. A Librarian's Tale. So, Nancy, you finally decided to talk to me. You seem so busy. I've been reluctant to bother you. Great Uncle Bruno named me executor of his estate, which means I have to make sure all his bills are paid and debts taken care of so his assets can be distributed. Unfortunately, he couldn't have cared less about little things like keeping records or balancing checkbooks. Dealing with his creditors and their lawyers has been an absolute nightmare. But he made you his executor? You two must have been close. Not really. My parents died in a car crash when I was eight. Since I had no other relatives, he took me in. Or should I say he shipped me out? 
Boarding school, summer camp, military school, college. <laughs> he may have looked after me, but he never spent any time with me. I didn't know him at all. So, thanks for stopping by, Nancy. And now you can report back to Ned that I'm fine and go enjoy New Orleans. No, I can't. Not until I know who that skeleton man was and what he was doing here and why he knocked me out like that. Look, I can understand you're not wanting to call the police, but somebody should investigate. And since playing detective is kind of a hobby with me... No offense, but are you sure you didn't just pass out from the heat and humidity or something and dream that you saw the skeleton dude? I'm positive. Okay, look around all you want. But I should probably warn you, Uncle Bruno was into exotic pets. Didn't believe in cages, so he gave him the run of the place. And just because he's dead doesn't mean they are. So if you're going to go poking around, be careful. How did Bruno die, if you don't mind my asking? Just dropped dead in the front hallway. I mean, the guy was 95 years old. Here, check it out. Myocardial infarction. That's doctor speak for heart attack. Attending physician, Dr. Gilbert Buford, 504-555-9970. Was that Bruno's doctor? And his best friend, or so I'm told. I've never met him. Interesting keychain. That's one of Uncle Bruno's glass eyes. It's the one he was wearing when he died. How nice. Anything else? Do you think I could borrow your keychain? The one that has Bruno's glass eye on it? You want to borrow it? What for? Actually, all I really want is the eye. I mean, it's just so cool. What if you break it? If it's on a chain, it can't be that fragile. I don't think I want to take that chance. Sorry. The box of your great uncle's things that you sold to Zeke's curio shop, that was a no-no, wasn't it? What box of things? I don't know what you're talking about. I found a half-burned receipt from Zeke's in the fireplace and did some investigating. Well, somebody screwed up somewhere because I haven't sold anything to anybody. Why would I sell one lousy box of stuff when I'm about to inherit a whole house full of stuff? Get real. You sold it because you needed some quick cash in order to keep Summer happy, didn't you? How do you know about her? Playing detective is actually a lot more than a hobby with me. I could make a lot of trouble for you, Henry. But if you come clean, tell me about Summer. She's this girl I'm in love with. I think she loves me back, but she's so unpredictable it drives me nuts. How is she unpredictable? I never know what's going to make her happy. Like, just before I left, I took practically every bit of cash I had and bought her a bunch of CDs. You know, to keep her occupied while I was gone, right? Well, soon as I get here, she calls and says her sound system just went bluey and I had to buy her a new one because what good were the CDs I bought her if she couldn't play them? So then I... So then you threw a bunch of Bruno's things into a box and sold it to that curio shop. Yeah. I wired her the money, but then she called and said she also needed new headphones. Next call, it was new speakers. And now she expects me to buy her a flat screen TV. When I try to talk to her about always wanting more like that, she gets really mad. But I'm afraid if I don't give her what she wants, she'll... I'm afraid she'll dump me. And I couldn't take that. I mean, she's the only girlfriend I've ever had. Ever will have, probably. Look, you don't need to go telling Renee or any of those lawyers about selling that stuff, right? I can't just ignore what you did, Henry. I know. You still want the glass eye? Take it. Go ahead. It's all yours. You want something, I want something. Take it and we're even, okay? Well, it's not like you sold off half the estate or anything. Three hundred bucks. That's all I've gotten out of his estate. I swear. Go on, take it. I was naughty, but from now on I'll be nice, I promise. I'll let you get back to work. Whatever. This shovel with the weird handle. Do you think I could borrow it? Dr. Bolay took great interest in that shovel. Don't know why. Never used it. Just like to see it hanging there. Me, I use it to dig up roots. I could dig you up some roots. Right now, I need mushrooms. I was hoping to get them picked tonight, but from the looks of all this potting I still have to do, I'd be happy to pick them for you. Wow, what a generous offer. All right, then. I need five painted conks. 
They're mushrooms that have got a short, fat stem and a large, bell-shaped cap covered with big red dots. You might find one or two here in the garden, but you'll have better luck in the boggy part of the cemetery. You get me five, no more, no less, and I'll let you borrow that shovel. Deal. You can put them in this bag. How else may I be of service to you? I'll see you later. Thanks for coming by. That should keep you guys quiet for a while. If I need another loquat, I'll just come back. Another painted comp. Yes! Gotta be it. Looks like the right name. No dummy. That looks like the right name.
Let's hope Neil is lying down by now. Bingo. Smells right to me. Hopefully this will give me a clue. Bess, how you doing? Great. I just took a nice, luxurious bubble bath and I'm ready to boogie. When are you coming back here? That's still kind of hard to say, but listen. Remember that old photo of a boy and his dog you said you saw in that box of stuff Henry sold to Lamont? Yeah. Did it look like it was maybe taken in the 1920s? That's exactly what it looked like. Why? Because I need to find out the name of Bruno Bollet's dog. And if that boy was Bruno, then that was probably his dog. Was there any writing on the picture? Yeah, as a matter of fact, I think it said Bruno. That's all it said? Just Bruno? No, it, it said Bruno and, but whatever came after and was hidden by the frame. I really need to know the name of that dog. Oh, no. No, you don't. No more snooping. Uh-uh. Bess, just get into that box again and see if the dog's name is on that picture. That's all I want you to do. How? I can't just go waltzing into Lamont's back room. And he's for sure as heck not going to fall for that sneeze contraption again. There must be some other way you can distract him. Please, Bess, I can't tell you how important this is. You've got to do this for me. Please? Okay. We're not going to have any fun here until you solve this mystery, and since you can't do that until I do this... Okay. I'll sneak into the back room and take another look at that photo. I mean, I will if I don't screw up. Think positive, Beth. You're going to do fine. You bet I am. In fact, I'm not going to call you again until I have seen that picture. I'm going in. You go, girl. Hey! That gumbo stand outside? What do you think? Is it pretty authentic? Outstanding! Just watch the hot sauce. Whatever's in it gives my stomach instant fits. You know, I still feel guilty about that sneezing thing, so how about I go and get you a nice big bowl of gumbo? Just so happens I'm starving, so hey, you got a deal. Great. I'll be right back. Hey, what'll it be? Can I get a gumbo to go, please? There you go. That my gumbo? There you go. Enjoy. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh. Oh, you're going to have to excuse me. Uh-oh. I better get out of here. Grant? The dog's name was Grant? That's what it said on the photo. Kind of a weird name for a dog, huh? Yeah, well, Bruno Bollet was kind of a weird guy. Hey, thanks a lot, Bess. You've been a huge help. I'll tell you, being sneaky takes a lot out of me. I'm exhausted. I still don't know when I'll get back there, so just kind of hang loose, okay? Story of my life. Call me if you need me. I will. Bye. This is Dr. Gilbert Buford's answering service. How may I help you? 
I need to talk to Dr. Buford. Could you maybe give me a number where I can reach him? No, ma'am, I cannot. Is this an emergency? Sort of. I mean, it's not a medical emergency. I just... See, I'm only going to be in town for a short time, and Dr. Buford and I have this mutual friend who died recently, and I just really need to talk to him about it. Need some consoling, huh? Yes, I need some consoling. That's it exactly. Well, tell you what. It's against the rules to give you his phone number, but I can tell you that now that he's all but retired, Dr. Buford spends most of his evenings at his favorite gumbo stand down in the French Quarter. If you really need to talk to him, you can probably find him there. Great. Do you know the address? It's at the corner of Rampart and Domain. Did you say Rampart and Domain? I did indeed. Granny Pumpkin's Cajun Cooking. They make some darn fine gumbo. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome, and uh, I'm truly sorry about your loss. My loss? That mutual friend of yours and Dr. Buford's. Oh, right. Thank you. That's very kind of you. Bye. You bring me that Coco Kringle bar like I asked? Right here. Bless you. I'm so hungry I could devour these plants I'm potting up, dirt and all. How else may I be of service to you? I picked those mushrooms for you. Well, bless your heart, you did it. Actually, picking the one growing on the log sticking out of the swamp was a little hairy. Oh, my. I forgot to warn you about Bernie, didn't I? If by Bernie you mean the alligator that almost had me for dinner, yeah, you did. He's another one of Dr. Bolet's pets. He'd kick that log to get Bernie's attention, then feed him marshmallows. Problem is, now that gator leaps up and snaps every time someone so much as touches that log. I should have said something, but I've gotten so used to Bernie, I just plain forgot. Anyway, feel free to help yourself to that shovel. You earned it. I'll see you later. Take care, hon. Bess, it's me. So what's been happening? Tell me everything. Well, let's see. Since the last time we talked, I was just about getting ready. Interesting stuff. But the reason I called is, I need you to talk to this doctor named Gilbert Buford, who, as it turns out, likes to hang out at a gumbo stand called Granny Pumpkin's Cajun Cooking, which should be right across from our hotel. You just want me to talk to him? That's it? Nothing nefarious? No black ops stuff? He was Bruno Bollet's doctor, and apparently his best friend, too. I just need for you to see if he thinks there was anything weird about the way Bruno died. 
What do you mean by weird? I mean, I kind of think maybe Bruno was murdered. Murdered? By whom? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Everyone's a suspect at this point. Including this Gilbert Buford guy? Well... Great, I'm going to be chatting up Jack the Ripper. Oh, I'm sure the guy's fine, but be subtle, just in case. Well, I can see the gumbo stand from our balcony. If he's the guy that's sitting down there, I guess he looks harmless. Okay, I'll go talk to him. Thanks, Beth. Let me know what happens. Cheerio! Why, hello, young lady. How kind of you to grace an old man with your lovely presence. <laughs> Are you Dr. Gilbert Buford? I'm delighted to report that I am indeed. Your answering service said I'd probably find you here. This here is my favorite spot in the whole city. Delicious gumbo, pleasing view, particularly now, I might add. <laughs> my name's Bess Marvin. I'd like to ask you some questions about Bruno Bollet, if that's okay. I'd prefer a subject matter of a happier nature, but I do not want to seem inhospitable, so what is it you want to know? Is there any doubt in your mind as to how Dr. Bollet died? He died of a myocardial infarction, most likely caused by age-related atherosclerosis. Dying of a heart attack is all too common for people who are socially isolated, and Bruno Bolle had most certainly become that. He was hard to get along with? Fact is, while socializing with my fellow man, particularly with pretty young women such as yourself, has always been a source of pleasure for me. Bruno was just the opposite. Unfortunately, the older he got, the more numerous his idiosyncrasies became, and the less concern about their negative effect upon others he became. Where was Dr. Bollet when he had his M.I.? In the foyer of his house, just inside the front door. In fact, I hadn't seen him for a while, so I picked that day to pay him a visit. I walked up to the front door, found it unlocked as usual, opened it, and there he was, lying on the floor in obvious distress. The next thing I know, his housekeeper came running in and started shrieking and carrying on until finally I sent her out of the room so she could summon an ambulance and I could once again hear myself think. Then I... Well, let's see. Then I knelt down and saw that he wasn't breathing. So I pulled him away from the doorway so I'd have more room to work on him and began chest compressions. I continued until the medics arrived, but nothing they did made a difference either. Was Dr. Bollet unconscious the whole time? Uh, yes, he was. Can you remember anything that might indicate what he was doing by the front door? I mean, had he just come in from a walk? Was he wearing a hat? Was he holding anything? Had he dropped something? An umbrella? Sunglasses? Wait a minute. Why, yes. Yes, he was holding something. A piece of paper. And on the floor next to him was an envelope. He must have collapsed while reading a letter. Do you know what happened to it? Now, I know the letter was no longer in Bruno's hand when the paramedics arrived, so perhaps he released the letter when I moved him. And yet, I do not recall seeing it on the floor when they wheeled him out the door. Iggy. What's Icky? Iggy. Iggy is an iguana Bruno befriended, then turned loose in his home. It soon developed the annoying habit of stealing paper and stockpiling it in the vent system. Are you saying an iguana made off with the letter Bruno had been reading? It would not have been the first time a missing document ended up in Iggy's possession. Rene would periodically call me saying the lizard had absconded with one of Bruno's prescriptions and would I please write her up a replacement. In any case, Bruno once told me he was training Iggy. Said he taught Iggy to retrieve the things it had stolen. I'll let you get back to your gumbo. Good night. Hello? Hi, Nance. Okay, here's what's been happening at mine. And that's pretty much it. Good work. I'll take it from here. Thanks again. Good luck. Bye. Iggy, come here, 
Piggy, got something for you. Juicy loquat. Bess, listen, you busy? Uh, why? I need you to do something for me. What? I need you to infiltrate the meeting of the Jolly Rogers crew that's about to be held at Rampart and Dumain, which has got to be right near Zeke's. You're going to have to look around for it. Now, to get into the meeting, you'll need to put on that skeleton man costume you saw in the back room. And once you're in the meeting, you'll need to listen for the name that opens the meeting so you can tell me what it is, okay? No. Beth, I know you don't like to do stuff like this, but this is really, really, really important. And it'll be the last thing I ask you to do. I promise. Oh, all right. I don't suppose it would do any good to point out that the curio shop is closed? You'll find a way in. Oh, and if anyone at the meeting asks, the password is Scuttled Bones. Okay, I'll give it a shot. That's the spirit. the password password right uh let's see uh scuttled bones better hurry we're just about to start Welcome, my fellow Jolly Rogers. You know that voice. We have several pressing matters to discuss this evening, so let us begin. As you may or may not have heard, certain city officials are attempting to deny us the right not only to gather in public places during the Mardi Gras season, but they have also seen fit to... Shoot, I forgot to turn off my cell phone. It seems we have an uninvited guest. Get him! <gasps> Let go! You're making a big mistake! Let go of me! Look, I'm not here to make trouble. You're making a, a big deal out of nothing. Can't we just talk about this? What are you thinking me? If you just let me explain! Why, it seems our trespasser is of the female variety. Let's have a look. <gasps> that 
That's right. You know me and I know you, Dr. Buford. And I also know that you were the one who attacked my friend over at the Bole Mansion today. And if you don't tell me why right now, I promise you, you are going to be in one big world of hurt. The young lady's clearly upset about something. Clarence, take over the meeting while I try to find out why she's making all these crazy accusations. They're not crazy and you know it! I will tell you everything, Miss Marvin, in private. And he did. He told me everything, Nancy. I bluffed him into confessing. You would have been so proud of me. Oh, and before I forget, the name they chanted at the start of the meeting was Jean Lafitte. Jean Lafitte. Great. Now, what did Dr. Buford tell you? Okay. First off, he said that with his dying breath, Bruno Bollet directed him to steal the painting of Henry's parents and lock it up in Henry's parents' crypt. Bruno seemed to think that way Henry would wind up with the crystal skull instead of somebody else. So Dr. Buford dressed up in his skeleton man costume, stole the canvas, and hid it in the crypt like Bruno asked. That must have been when Rene saw Mr. Death. But then, Dr. Buford had second thoughts and decided to hack with Henry. He wanted that crystal skull for himself. So this afternoon, he dressed up in his skeleton man costume again and snuck into Henry's house so he could get the key from that mini cemetery and retrieve the painting he'd left in that crypt, knowing the painting would somehow lead him to the skull. Only I walked in on him and ruined everything. Right. And now that we're on to him, he says he no longer wants the skull. He's embarrassed that he allowed his superstitious side to get the best of him and says whoever finds the skull is welcome to it. At least that's what Dr. Buford said. Uh-oh. Uh-oh what? I told him you were looking for the skull. That's all right. Actually, I told him you were on the verge of finding it. Why would you tell him that? I don't know. I got carried away. So if he lied to me, and he really does still want the skull, then he might come after you. He left right after we talked, and I don't think he went back into that meeting. What if he's on his way over there? Don't worry, I'll be fine. Why don't you just... Whoa, that bolt of lightning was huge. Anyway, why don't you just go relax, and I'll be back at the hotel before you know it, okay? Bess? Hello? Bess, you there? Nope, she sure isn't.
Scout, what on earth have you gone and done? The lid's closing and I don't know how to stop it. Here, I'll pull you up. Toss what you're holding up here, then give me your hands. Come on, you best hurry. Here it comes. <sighs> Renee, a little help, please? The crystal skull. After all that scheming, how do I finally get it? Why, this nice little Yankee girl just hands it to me. Renee, help me! Hurry, please! Thank you, Nancy. Bye now. No! You've got to help me! Renee! Renee! Here's my center of... There. That skull isn't yours. This ain't nothing of the fact that you just tried to bury me alive. The skull is mine. It wants to be mine. Yes, I did my share of scheming to get it. I got Dr. Bolay to go to the authenticators, then switched the letter they wrote saying it was real with one I wrote saying it was fake, in hopes that Dr. Bolay would just hand it over to me. Yes, my plan failed, and yet, here we are. I have the skull. Why? Because it knows that I will fulfill its destiny. Bruno Bollet wanted Henry to have it. That's why he had Gilbert Buford steal that painting and hide it in Henry's parents' crypt. Because he hoped that way Henry would eventually find it. Henry's a fool. If he ever got his hands on this, he would just turn around and give it to that trashy girlfriend of his. Dr. Bollet, he just wanted it because he was terrified of dying. Gilbert Buford, too. And that Lamont fella, he just wants to sell it to the highest bidder. For me, my motives are pure. I am going to protect it so it can rendezvous with all those other skulls. I'm going to be right there when they start conversing and all the mysteries of the universe are forever solved. Renee burst into tears and sobbed as Bernie swam away with a crystal skull. It made me feel sorry for her for about two seconds. After all, while she may not have meant to cause Bruno's death, she certainly meant to cause mine when she left me sealed up in that crypt. It felt good to turn her over to the police. Later that night, Dr. Buford came over and apologized for knocking me out with that smoke bomb and for allowing himself to think, even for a moment, that Bruno's crystal skull was anything more than a pretty piece of quartz. To make up for his shameful behavior, he insisted on taking Bess and me on a grand tour of New Orleans. Seeing the city through the eyes of someone who loves it as much as Dr. Buford was truly special. He invited Henry too, but Henry declined. He was still trying to process the fact that his great uncle wanted him to have the skull. Henry always thought that to Bruno, he was nothing more than an annoying family obligation, someone Bruno couldn't care less about. Yet Bruno's request of Dr. Buford, made with his dying breath, proved that he did care about Henry. Apparently, and unfortunately for Henry, Bruno was the type of man who just couldn't bring himself to say such things out loud. As for Lamont, when he heard what happened, he closed his shop, bought enough marshmallows to fill a swamp boat, and has been scouring the bayous ever since, kicking every log he comes to in hopes of finding Bernie and the crystal skull inside him. But Bernie has yet to turn up. Maybe the skull didn't agree with him. 
Maybe swallowing it caused him to stop associating the sound of a kicked log with yummy sweet things. In any case, the whisperer has disappeared, lost to the world once again, which is totally fine by me. Talk about a detective's dream.